and I got together out in my house one Christmas week and uh, decided we'd write some songs and we wrote seven songs in that night and uh, one of them was what can you do to me now and the next day my house burned <laughs> oh my god uh, as good as it is ain't life hell you know that me and Willie recorded <laughs> well I made a lot of money working like a dog did you use your life experiences for these songs or I use Hanks <laughs> <laughs> there was much more material in using Hanks now that's the words to my song if you want any more <laughs> write your own hey. anything else you might want to say to Hank hey, so, hey, hey get a job <laughs> 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 Man, Willie's got that. A duet out on that. Born Garland Perry Cochran in Isola, Mississippi, Hank's childhood seemed a reflection of the times in which he was born. Hank's love for music started early, and by the age of 10, he was singing and playing guitar in church. Hank got to Nashville in January of 1960 and immediately landed a writing job with Pamper Music, earning $50 a week. I don't know, one day I woke up and Hank, Hank Cochran was a big part of my life uh, from the viewpoint of a songwriter. And, and I was, I forget exactly how we got to know each other, but it just seemed like I, I've always known him. Somewhere about three or four o'clock in the morning that phone rang and she started cussing. <laughs> I said, I don't know. I said, hey, it can't be for me. I said, nobody knows where I am, yeah. you know. Yeah. She answered that phone and it's Hank, you know, he said, it's Hank there. <laughs> she, she hand thrust the phone over there across the, to my side of the bed and I took it, you know, and I said, hello, and uh, it's Hank, and he said, Hank. And I said, yeah, Hank, uh, what's happening? And he said, um, I'll be in there Tuesday and we'll, we can cut. I said, we can cut what? And then I said, you know, I'm four o'clock and I'm sound asleep and she's hollering in my ear, you know. And he said, I said, okay, well, the album. And he said, yeah. Hank was uh, aware of what I wanted on an album. And uh, I didn't want to have to worry about making sure we was getting it. Just, you know, plowing through and let him worry about those kind of things. And it worked good. Yeah. Worked good. They got old Hank and Lefty in their speech 24. Set them up, Joe, and play walking the floor. Set them up, Joe, and play walking the floor. Forty years worth of not just, just radio hits, but songs that actually have meaning and, and substance that you can uh, uh, apply to life. And I think that's what, uh, what Hank brings country music that'd be one of his finest qualities that's the that's the thing about about country music that people grab onto is when when they can hear themselves saying what's in a song to somebody i bet you when that came out that it, in dance clubs in texas and everywhere else that people were using that line yeah. you know they were walking up and, well excuse me but i think you've got my chair no, that one's not taken, I don't mind. If you sit here, I'll be glad to share. It's usually packed here on Friday night. Are you waiting for someone to meet you here? Well, that makes two of us glad you came. I mean, there's nothing about that song. that It's just completely <laughs> the way that you would say every word. And the way I was feeling in my life, I couldn't write. I couldn't find the words for the way I felt at that moment. Mm. I found it better in other people's songs because the clarity, and I had to relearn the clarity of the writing through, well, a couple of Hanks, this Hank and the other Hank, you know, right. the, the, the Hank Williams, you know, you have to go to that kind of, mm. it's not simplicity, it's purity. Sometimes when I try to write like you, it just comes out like, why did I write just such a dull lyric? You know, I, I can't do it always. And not everybody has got that gift. The only thing different The only thing you I got the picture He's got you 
Not only did Hank write songs for some of country music's greatest, he also had the privilege of calling them friends. And these friends took his songs and turned them into classics. So I took it over to Patsy and she loved the song and he got closer and closer to her to record. She turned on the song and said, I don't think I'll cut that, I'll fall to pieces so. I said, Patsy, <laughs> well, wait a minute, that's my song. Just think about how many times people have gotten in their, their truck or their car and turned on the radio or put a CD or a tape in and um, heard a Hank Cochran song and made them cry or made them mad and made them go buy another beer. <laughs> or made them throw the beer down, you know, you never know. She got me standing upright, even had me coming home nice, but she never got me over you. You don't love me, but you won't let me be Don't you ever get tired of hurting me Well, you'd, like I told you a minute ago, there are dozens of Hank Cochran songs that I'd love to record that I haven't gotten to yet. Uh, may you live a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was just my life, you know. I just wrote, which I do like most of the things I write, is just come from, you know, that's living for a song. <laughs>